If we were to draw a model of a linear system, it would look something like this. There would be an input to the system, some process and an output. As we can see, the input and the output to the system are independent from each other. The value that we input to the system now is not in any way affected by the previous output. There are of course phenomena where this holds true, such as the flipping of a coin. The value I will get from flipping a coin now will not be dependent in any way on the value I got the last time that I flipped it. In mathematics, this is called the Markov property. But the fact is that many things in our world don't behave like this, meaning that the current input variables to the system are dependent upon a previous output and current outputs will affect future inputs. The state of the weather today will affect the state of the weather tomorrow. The amount of money I have in my account today will, through interest, affect the amount I have tomorrow and so on. This phenomena where the output of a system is fed back to become the input as part of a chain of cause and effect that forms a circuit or loop is called a feedback loop. A feedback loop may be defined as a channel or pathway formed by an effect returning to its cause and generating either more or less of the same effect. An example of this might be a dialogue between two people. What you say now will affect what the other person will say and that will, in turn, feedback as the input to what you will say in the future. A full discussion of the dynamics of feedback loops is beyond the scope of this module. Our aim here is to merely touch on how they affect the behavior of systems with respect to nonlinearity. Feedback loops are divided into two qualitatively different types, what are called positive and negative feedback. A negative feedback loop represents a relationship of constraint and balance between two or more variables. When one variable in the system changes in a positive direction, the other changes in the opposite, negative direction, thus always working to maintain the overall combined value to the system. An example of this could be the feedback loops that regulate the temperature of the human body. Different body organs work to maintain a constant temperature within the body by either conserving or releasing more heat. Through sweating and capillary dilation, they counterbalance the fluctuation in the system's external environmental temperature. Another example of a negative feedback loop might be between the supply and demand of a product. The more demand there is for a product, the more the price may go up, which will in turn feed back to reduce the demand. We can then note the direct additive relationship here, where one component goes up, the other goes down in a somewhat proportional fashion, with the end result being a linear system that tends towards equilibrium. We haven't yet had a chance to discuss the significance of equilibrium, but it plays a very important role in linear systems theory. When we have these additive negative feedback loops, the net result is a zero-sum game. The total gains and losses combined are zero, we can then define this as the system's equilibrium or normal state, with our models then being built on this assumption of there being an equilibrium. This concept of equilibrium holds well for isolated systems and systems in negative feedback loops, but as we'll see, this assumption about there being an equilibrium breaks down in nonlinear systems, and thus we describe them as being far from equilibrium. Positive feedback, in contrast to a negative feedback, is a self-reinforcing process. The increase in a value associated with one element in the relation are correlated with an increase in the values associated with another. In other words, both elements either grow or decay together. Examples of this are numerous, such as compound interest, where last year's increases result in an increase in this year's input, or chain reactions such as cattle stampedes are another example. But the result is always a self-reinforcing process that leads to exponential outcomes of growth or decay. Total gains and losses are non-additive and do not sum up to zero. Thus, there is no equilibrium and thus we get a system that is far from equilibrium. These positive feedback loops are of course unsustainable, requiring the input of energy from their environment. The exponential growth in human industrial activity over the past few centuries could be cited here. The more developed our industrial technologies are, the better we are able to process and access petroleum, which again feeds back to result in more energy and more industrial development and so on. 
But the point is that this is all the product of some input of energy from the system's environment that will eventually reach some limit. Positive and negative feedback loops are key to the dynamics of nonlinear systems, and we'll be discussing them further later on in the course. But for the moment, we will summarize with a few key takeaways. Firstly, that as soon as we put our system into its environment, its output will in some way affect that environment, and this will, in turn, affect the future input to the system through what is called a time delay feedback loop. If the new input produces a result in the opposite direction to the previous results, then it is a negative feedback and the effects will stabilize the system towards some equilibrium point. If these new inputs facilitate and accelerate the development of the system in the same direction as the previous results, they are positive feedback, resulting in nonlinear exponential growth or decay. Lastly, whereas negative feedback will lead to the system converging around some equilibrium state, Positive feedback leads to divergent behavior as it rapidly moves away from an equilibrium, and we describe them as being far from equilibrium.